I do. And I also understand that we have um, all of these services recorded online. So if you miss one or if you're just wanting to watch it during the week too, um, they're on our YouTube channel. So make sure to subscribe to that so you can watch them. But yeah, uh, Dimitri is supposed to be around here somewhere. Dimitri? Seven. Welcome. Dimitri, what are you doing? Oh, hi, Teacher Becca. Jake and I are playing hide and seek right now, and I'm trying to find him. Where did he go? Hmm. Hmm. I found you! You got me! I'm glad you guys are having some fun. You know, that actually reminds me of our lesson for this morning. Hide and seek? Yep. Today, we're going to read from Joshua 7 and 8. One of the Israelites took something that they weren't supposed to, and then they hid it. Do you guys want to hear it? Yes! All right. Well, remember how last week we learned about how the Israelites walked around the walls of Jericho and God made them come tumbling down? Jericho was a city full of lots of people and lots of stuff. God commanded that all the people in Jericho, except Rahab and her family, were to be destroyed. Earlier on, when the Israelites were in the desert, God told them not to have pity on the people who lived in Canaan. The people were very wicked, and they worshipped other gods. God didn't want them to have anything to do with the wickedness of Jericho. So, immediately after God's victory in Jericho, we read these tragic words. The people of Israel weren't faithful to the Lord. They didn't do what they were told to do with the things that had been set apart to him in a special way to be destroyed. Elkan had taken some of those things, so the Lord's anger burned against Israel. One of the Israelites, a man named Achan, had taken some of the forbidden treasures and hidden them. Joshua didn't know about this. He was concerned with the Israelites' next battle. So he sent out spies to check out the land and the people. This time, they went to a city named Ai. When the spies returned, they told Joshua that he would not need to send all the Israelite men to fight because there were not very many people in the city. So only about 3,000 men went up, but the men of Ai drove them away. They chased the men of Israel from the city, did all the way to Shebarim. They killed about 36 of them on the way down, so the hearts of the people of Israel melted away in fear. The few men of Ai easily defeated the 3,000 Israelite men. The men of Ai chased the Israelites and even killed several of them. The Israelites were pretty scared. Joshua and, Le and the leaders fell down on their face in prayer for hours. Joshua asked God why this had happened. He wished they had never even crossed the Jordan River. He feared that the people of Canaan, who had been afraid of the Israelites, would hear about this battle and come attack them. God told Joshua, Get up! Why are you lying first down there? God told Joshua that Israel had sinned. Someone had taken some of the forbidden items. God said they had stolen and lied. Because of this, God had removed his hand of protection from them. Then God said these chilling words. I will no longer be with you unless you destroy what has contaminated you. God told Joshua to tell the Israelites to get ready because the next day, God wanted Joshua to call all of the tribes together. God would choose a tribe. From that tribe, God would choose a clan. From that clan, God would choose a family. And from that family, each family member would come before God. God would reveal who had disobeyed him. God commanded that this person must be killed because he disobeyed God's command. What happened next? Early the next morning, Joshua did as God had instructed. God chose the tribe of Judah, the clan of Zerahite, and the family of Zimri. Out of that family, God chose Achan. Joshua told Achan to confess what he had done. Achan replied, It is true. I have sinned against the Lord, the God of Israel. Among the plunder, I saw a beautiful robe from Babylon, 200 silver coins, and a bar of gold weighing more than a pound. I wanted them so much that I took them. They are hidden in the ground beneath my tent, with the silver buried deeper than the rest. Joshua sent men to check out Achan's tent. 
They found the stolen items hidden, just as Achan had said. The men brought the items out and laid them in front of everyone. Joshua took Achan, his family, the things he had stolen, and everything he owned to a valley. There, the Israelites obeyed God and stoned Achan and his family. Everything he owned was set on fire. Then God was no longer angry. God told Joshua not to be afraid or discouraged. He instructed Joshua to take the whole army and attack Ai again. God promised, I have delivered into your hands the king of Ai, his people, his city, and his land. Notes. God was the one doing the delivering. God said that this time the Israelites could keep the livestock and everything else they took from the people. Just as he did with Jericho, God gave them the plan of attack. God said to have some of the fighting men hide behind the city and take them by surprise. Wow! Do you think they're going to win the battle, Dimitri? Of course! God always wins the battle! You're exactly right, Dimitri. So Joshua took the whole army with him. At nighttime, he chose 30,000 of his best fighting men and told them to go around behind the city. Joshua and the rest of the army approached the city from the front. When the king of Ai saw Joshua and his men coming, the king and all the men came out to fight him. Joshua and his men pretended to be afraid and turned to run away. Every single man in Ai and the neighboring town of Bethel went after them. They left the city completely unguarded. Unguarded. God told Joshua to hold out his sword, or javelin, toward Ai. As soon as he did, the men who were hiding behind the city got up quickly. They came out of their hiding places and rushed forward. They entered the city and captured it. They quickly set it on fire. The men of Eli looked back. They saw smoke rising up from the city into the sky, but they couldn't escape in any direction. The king and his men couldn't escape. The Israelites were around them on all sides. Joshua held out his sword until all the people were killed. Only the king was taken alive, and he was hanged a short time later. The Israelites carried off, carried off the livestock and the goods of the city, and Joshua burned the city to the ground. God had promised to deliver the king, the people, the city, and the land into Joshua's hand. Again, we see that God always keeps his promises. Oh, that reminds me of our memory verse. The Lord himself will fight for you. Just stay calm. Exodus 14, 14, thank you. Good job, you guys. Joshua built an altar to God on Mount Ebal. The Israelites offered burnt sacrifices to God on this altar. Then... With every man, woman, and child gathered around him, Joshua read all the words of the law that God had given to Moses. He read every word of it to the people. No doubt, Joshua did not want anyone to sin against, sin against God again. The people crowded around to hear. I'm sure that they didn't want to sin like Achan had either. Sister Becker, sometimes I try to hide my sin from God. Me too. I know, guys. It's easy to try and cover up the things cover up things when we disobey God. We can hide them so that nobody else knows, but God sees it all. But he doesn't want us to hide sin from him. He wants us to love and obey him. I want to love and obey God. Teacher Becker, when I do something wrong, I want to confess it to God. Instead of hiding it. That's awesome, you guys. Have a good week, Teacher Becker. Thank you. <laughs> you too. Bye, guys. Bye.